Well, good morning and welcome to Southern Cross. We have a presentation this morning uh, from the University of Queensland and Inspire STEM. Last year in 2019, the college was uh, lucky enough to have an electron microscope here at the school. And we submitted a couple of images in a national competition and we're here to uh, say uh, thank you very much to Inspire STEM because uh, Southern Cross was able to take out a couple of prizes with our wonderful images that the students were able to um, scan uh, here at the college. So I'd like to welcome this morning uh, staff from UQ, so uh, Dr Candice Goodwin and Bronwyn Cribb along with uh, Janelle Dunn, head of campus. Uh, we have four of our students who were involved in the scanning last year as well as Mr Simon White and head of department Mrs Dippo Kaladi. So I'd like to hand over to Candice to say a few words. Thank you, Michael. Right, so my name's Dr. Candice Michelle Goodwin. This is Dr. Bronwyn Cribb. We're representing the Inspire STEM Education Program in the University of Queensland. The reason we're here today is because your school won the 2019 Inspire STEM Education Image Competition, and we are going to present you with your in images on a canvas. Um, so firstly, Congratulations to your school and your teachers for participating in this program. My favorite part of doing this program is watching kids see the microscopic world for the first time. And this activates the imagination and it inspires them to pursue STEM careers. So congratulations to school. I'm glad that they're doing it again this year. Um, so you guys have it for National Science Week and you've got two weeks of scientific experiments to look forward to. And the Chief Scientific Officer of Queensland is covering this part of National Science Week. And you can check out their Facebook page to see exposure for your school too. So that's pretty great. So the second thing is I'm going to talk to you a little bit about SEM and what the technology is in case you don't know how these images were made. So. Scanning electron microscopes use a focused beam of electrons to produce images of objects that have been magnified up to two million times, revealing detail and complexity inaccessible with light microscopy. Today's SEMs are smaller and easier to use, which helps expand research. And when you use the actual microscope, you'll see it's small, it's bench top. It's incredible to have that technology available to schools and we can move it remotely from school to school so it's a great time to be able to get results using something like that and the benefit of that in terms of stem careers is nanotechnology which is covering a variety of scientific fields so nanotech impacts every part of our modern lives it's a field that students and teachers and adults actually know very little about so again it's great that we have the opportunity here for you to use this and learn more about nanotech and it's key in so many things, including cleaning your water, defense, mining, cleaner energy sources, drug treatments, um, treatments of various diseases, development of communications, electronics, robotics, material sciences, the list really goes on and on. Um, you know, and this is a great opportunity to understand what the real world applications are. So we're very happy to have it on your campus. And a lot of the things that I've said is very STEM heavy, very sciences and engineering heavy, but this also opens the door to the arts. So there really is this cross pollination between the arts and sciences and seeing beautiful images like this can inspire artists, to create new artistic works, which inspires the minds of others. Um, patterns like this can be used in interior design, textiles and fabrics. And for instance, I do film and TV work too, and there's so many science projects, whether it's science fiction or factual projects that need to make use of beautiful visuals like this and ultimately inspires the audience and inspires the community at large. So there really are far reaching applications to using this. Um, so we're looking at these images and you want to know what they are. So I'm going to hand over to Bronwyn to let you know what they are, because she's an entomology expert and those are actually parts of insects. So this one here, this is what's called a lerp case and this is the exudate from a bug that lives on the leaves of plants, leaves like eucalypt leaves for instance, and the bug secretes these, this mesh over the top of it for protection and you'll often find uh, birds going jumping across from leaf to leaf uh, and uh, 
sort of looking at the leaf and picking at the leaf and what they're doing is they're actually lifting off these notes because for a bird it's like a lolly or a sweet uh, because the insect inside is exuding sugar solution so it's like a little lolly casing but they're, they're almost shell-like in their intricacy and, and beauty it's a, a lovely lovely picture of one well done now this one here is perhaps a little bit more exotic this is a fly's whole tear and you may never have heard of the term whole tear before but it's the gyroscope that a fly has that keeps it upright as it's flying along so as you'll notice with a lot of insects they have pairs of wings they have two pairs of wings but flies have one pair of wings because the back wings are turned into these little bugs which vibrate to help keep the fly stable as it's flying through the air. So that's what a whole tail is. We've learned a lot about navigation through studying insects actually and the way they, they navigate with their wings and their eyes. But, uh, the, the intricacy and the detail here is, is absolutely beautiful I think. It's, it's tremendously artistic and it really shows the the fine scale detail and, and the repetitive patterning that you get on surfaces when you look into what is for most of us the, the unseeable or the invisible world. So again, very well done on that one and congratulations. So we might um, ask you maybe to present that one to, to Ryan on this side. Ryan, step forward please. <laughs> And we might give the, the lope structure to Ben here. Ben, well done. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Janelle, would you like to say Thank a few you. words? I would just like to offer a vote of thanks um, to both Candice and Bronwyn and uh, also to the science department led by Dr Dippo Kaladi and uh, Mike Jones. I guess what we're really committed to here is providing opportunity. We've heard that this morning, that this is a fabulous opportunity. Really important that we're meeting the needs of our diverse learners and inspiring them to engage with the, with the curious nature of, of what can come from having these experiences. And we're just delighted that we have yet again this opportunity this year as part of Science Week. And we cannot thank you enough for working closely with us, that collaboration that we really do greatly appreciate and look forward to continuing into the future. So well done to everybody. And it's very exciting as we work together again, moving forward into Science Week. Thank you.